Girl, I ate. And then I took a nap and I came back and I ate some more. Cause right there is four plus four. Eight. This look is so good. Mabuhai Mega, I'm Jeannie Mai, and I'm gonna be reacting to some of my iconic fashion moments. So this is Mega Fashion Moments. Oh, okay. Here's where we're pulling it together. I loved my Miss Universe look. This was styled by Wilfred Lenov, my amazing stylist in LA. And it was a mirrored mermaid skirt with a mirrored corset that had a beautiful angle to it so that your waist looked and because it was two pieces, I just loved it more because I could move and dance. And the fun fact is, if you notice how the cups go down in the brassiere really low, well, that was definitely not okay for public television because my boobies were like, hola. It was way too much. So we actually took a piece of satin, Wilford did, shout out to Wilford, and we put it right over the top and it took so much time to get that piece of satin just right because I wanted it to have like a bit of a texture to it so that it wouldn't look so perfect on TV and it worked amazingly. And girl, we got the hair right. Ooh. I love the Miss Universe organization. I just love what it stands for. I've always been about the candidates. I've always been about the excitement and the energy that these ladies go through all year long to get to where they are. So I don't personally get caught up in like the business side of the organization. I'm more about the meaning and the value and the celebration that it is for all the countries that are there. I have only nothing but good memories about Miss Universe. Miss Universe 2023, this was so fun. This was my first time in El Salvador. I got three outfits and I really wanted to go very unique on my looks. The first look was Laquan Smith and honey, Laquan just makes it sexy. Like it was just literally when you pull out the dress, it looks like it's this big like this big and it's just, it looks like black pantyhose. That's how crazy sexy that dress is. And I threw it on and it's one of those dresses where you have to make sure you know your angles and your arch so that I knew how to stand and, and it was so fun. And then the second one is I've always loved a deconstructed tuxedo for men, but I don't want to be so boxy with like the pants and the top and the button up shirt. So we did a mesh see-through skirt, which I thought was so fly with a black bodysuit, a men's white button up. I, I literally took a Tom Ford suit and tie and button up and I just chopped it. That, that was styled by Marissa Pelli, who did an amazing job. So yeah, score all the way. Listen, I have hosted all over the world from Vietnam to El Salvador to Venezuela to Brazil. Nobody, nobody does the pageant scene like the Filipinas do. Man, the Pinoy pride is off the hook. It's insane. Like y'all really do plan for this. I feel like you planned the day you were born. I feel like you guys come out of your mamas and your guys, you guys are like, what province are we voting for? How high are the heels? Where's Jojo Bragais? You guys know that thing so well. It's crazy. So when I step into Manila, I know, I know exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be over at the Mall of Asia, practicing my lines. Doesn't matter what date the pageant is going to be, but I need to be ready because y'all stay ready for those pageants. New York Fashion Week 2023. Oh, this was such a magical season of fashion for me because I celebrated some of my great friends, Prabhu Gurung being one of them. I love his work. Nobody brings together the essence of emotion and movement like Prabhu does. And Pat Bo is another one of my favorite designers, which you see there in the shimmy shimmy pop two piece outfit that I have. And then Falguni Shane Peacock, who I've worn since 20 years back. Yeah, Fashion Week is so fun. I, I love it because it's in New York City, the weather is warm, everybody's feeling sexy, anything goes when it comes to Fashion Week. Paris Fashion Week. Okay, so this was my first ever Paris Fashion Week. And I was so excited to go because I brought Monaco for the first time, so she was in Paris. And I wore Stefan Roland and Gaurav Gupta, incredible designers. I also wore Julien Fournier. There were quite a few designers that I went to go see, but here with these outfits, I just love how different they are. You know, in Paris, it's kind of like New York, anything goes, but a little ho ho ho. And I brought, I brought it. I grew up in a house where we really celebrated style, Mama Mai. She taught me how to make magic out of saran wrap. And as much as I love saran wrap, it's cheap. 
Having money helps to not just buy designer brands, because I'm not about all the designer brands, but you have more access to be able to afford quality over quantity and I enjoy that. So I love being able to afford things that last me um, a lot more today. Okay, this, this look right here for the Daytime Emmys 2018 celebration, this was so major because you guys, at this point, I had been to maybe 10 Daytime Emmys from how do I look to the real and have never won an Emmy. And on this night, with that wig I'm wearing, I won, she won, yes! It was the best day ever. I won my first ever Daytime Emmy. So I'm the first ever Asian American television host who won a Daytime Emmy. So that was a very, very big, amazing night for all of us, me and the ladies. Aren't they beautiful? It was so special. Oh my God, the 2024 Golden Globes. Girl, I ate. And then I took a nap and I came back and I ate some more. Cause right there is four plus four. Eight. This look is so good. I'm like, oh my gosh. It was Miss Carolina Herrera and it's the baubles. It's the rich like dimensions of the dress that you can see kind of jump out at you from the screen. And it's me looking elegant and poised. Like she drinks her tea and eats her crumpets like this. It's giving the acting, it's giving the drama, and it's giving the <laughs> me. I loved it. The 2024 People's Choice Awards. Okay, so this is a really cool look. This is by Lena Barisha, and it's a caged harness corset dress. I love this look because I got ready with Monaco, my daughter. So she just put all the energy and the sass into my outfit. If you go back to my Instagram on this page, I'll never forget walking the People's Choice Awards carpet. There's something about the People's Choice Awards. It's so fun because it's all the fans voting. So I remember I was there with um, Ice Spice and Billie Eilish was there and we were complimenting each other's looks and it was just a vibe, it was so cool. You know what, who was another Asian American that I saw there that I kind of fangirled over? Do you guys know Princess Tiara? Plastic Princess, Tiara. what? Plastic Tiara. Plastic Tiara? Princess, I got it right. Princess Plastic Tiara, you ate, you served. It was beautiful, I loved it. So I, I was able to see some of my favorite people there. Oh. Okay, this look has meaning uh, beyond what I'm wearing. So this is my beautiful dress by Antonio Grimaldi Couture. And I wore it to this year's 2024 Gold Gala. And the Gold Gala is hands down my favorite event out of all the Hollywood events I attend because it is purely a celebration of Asian American excellence. So whether it be fashion to technology, to finance, to movies, television, everything, it's a huge family dinner where I get to see all my cousins from every side of the Asian diaspora. And it's so meaningful. I love that event so much. And so attending that night and just being there to just laugh and cry with my brother's sister's cousins from another, a beautiful night. You know, what's crazy is I've noticed being Asian American, that the opportunities have opened up so much more compared to when I first started. But the thing that really stands out to me is some of the most prominent, talented Asian creators from fashion to entertainment, to music, to technology, they have always been doing what they're doing. They have always been supreme at what they do. It's just that the world is suddenly now beginning to take notice. So. Even though, oh yeah, Asians are becoming more seen now. It's, it's becoming more trendier. The, the doors are opening. No, Asians have been killing the game. Asians have always been doing it. The designers that I wear now have been creating those designs for years, for decades. But it's just now that everybody else is waking up and I'm here for it. However we can make space for one another, however I can use my body, my voice, my opportunities to celebrate another Asian, an AAPI member of my family, I'm here for it. And so we should all do the same. We're not just there yet where we deserve to be, but we are gonna be here for years to come. So we're not going anywhere. We're ready when we are. And there you have it. This is Jeannie Mai for your mega fashion moments. Mwah! For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Mega Channel and make sure to hit that notification bell so you know that we're popping. We're live up in your scene. Hello, honey. Mwah!